Art Sherpa, and we're departing on Big Art Quest number two today. How to make color, custom color mixes, and a custom color mixing chart. Ooh, I'm so excited to be sharing this with you today because when I created the quest, I've really been racking my brain like, what would be the most helpful, like functionally the most helpful to new artists? And quest number two just had to be how to get a custom color mixing chart together because this will actually save you from having to buy paint you don't need and getting the most out of the paint that you buy. Mm. I John is on the mic with me today. He's going to be controlling the horizontal and the vertical and the cameras. Hey guys. And all the crazies we go here and there and here and there and here and there. Now, um I have in the i card other really great references. A color journey is an evolved journey in art. It is the calculus. Oh. You think it'd be perspective, but perspective in it, it's color mixing. Color theory is a whole thing. But guess what? We're not doing that today. We're not doing no calc. No. We are whistling a happy little tune. Oh, really? <laughs> is what we are doing. So what I'm going to show you is just functionally what you need to have in your studio. I'm not going to teach you color theory. I'm not going to be like raining down on you about light waves and the drop-off point of color and how figure for No. I mean, we might cover some of these ideas, but in a really fun, light way. I'm going to just show you how to take the paint that you have and know what green it will give you. Ooh. Which I think is probably the most important thing that, is that any soon. artist needs. So today I have our 9 by 12 canvas paper. Uh -huh. Right? Yep, That's a tool. I Obviously, materials are, all as always, in the description you know, I've got a pencil. I have this fabulous Artist Loft T-Square that I got for $4. Mm, yeah. But it's just the small T-Square. If you just get a 12-inch clear plastic T-Square, it'll do it for you. And I also got the Artist Loft Triangle. And I'm just getting these because they're just a really good price. And I'm not needing architectural level tools. I just am trying to make a straighter line than yeah. I'll freehand. I'm going to show you an example of a color chart that I made. There's a lot of colors on that. There's a lot of colors on there. Now, this I was looking for certain things, so I set it up a certain way. Some things my color chart has, it talks about black and it talks about white. Mm. So that I know what the tints of these are. And it talks about their values in relationship to each other. We're not going to do this whole crazy chart. This takes forever. I'm going to show you the fundamentals of chart. Fundamentals. So that you can take the paint that you have today at home. Mm-hmm. And make one of these. Cool. Is that fine? That is cool. So we're going to be over here. Oh, the other thing I have is waterproof archival pens. This is what I'm using for the coloring book right now. Oh, neat. And so I'm using these. And that's so you can see that you can just do this in pencil. I just needed something you guys could see. I'm upside down. That's okay. I think everything's upside down. Other thing there. we're going to talk about. We're going to cover. Definitely we're going to cover this color wheel. <laughs> There's the, that's the most awesome <laughs> color wheel. I think it keeps it in perspective. And art chemistry. How we create mixes and then remember what the heck we did to get that color. Oh, you got two. Yeah, I got two of these. I've got two examples of these. Right? Yeah. And this is actually the simplest thing in the world. Like, recipes are harder than this. This is like, this could not be simpler. This could not be more fun. This could not open up what's going on with your paint in your studio more just here's what I want to say about the color wheel the color wheel in general the thinking on it is changing and we need to think about colors as being cool and warm right so instead of just having primaries of red blue and yellow mm -hmm. we now have six primaries two blues two reds and two yellows the cool and warm blues the cool and warm yellows, the cool and warm reds. You know, I know that seems crazy, but that's what we're doing. But it'll help you if you think about it. Crimson is cool, right? The naphthol crimson is kind of a cooler red. Mm -hmm. 
And the cad red, which we deal with all the time, is a warm red because it's got that orange tint, gives you some crazy awesome colors. That's all it is. It just lets you know when your mix is going to go crazy. Let's go to the palette cam, John. Now, uh, real quick on your mm. on your on the uh, pa- on your canvases there. Yes. Or, or, sorry, not canvas. On the, the pad paper. you're using. Yes. Uh, there's been a, a couple questions here about uh, mm. like Frederick's canvas pads uh, as opposed you know the uh, as opposed to the acrylic paper. Okay. Is that okay? So here's the deal with if you have an actual canvas pad, like it's canvas mm-hmm. and it's in a pad, it doesn't work in the hole punch to go in your book. Gotcha. That's the only thing that it is. It's true. It's a canvas. It's in a sheet. You can dry mount it. You can frame it. Um, I have a three-ring binder, mm-hmm. so that would be not functional for mine. Stephanie Bergeron did the Instructable, okay, and okay. that might actually take actual canvas paper. But if you were to put it like, if you were to use like uh, maybe some sleeves or some sort of portfolio you case, the thing okay. about sleeves is they're going to stick to your acrylic paint. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm. So you really but you could like glue it to something else and ah. attach it in. Being creative is just about making what you have work. So if you spent your budget on canvas, fabric canvas paper, mm-hmm. you got to make it work. Yep. Right? There's not a pass or fail. This is your your book of stuff, right? So it's not like I'm coming to your house and, and you know, like when you're in art school, they're going to evaluate your book. I'm not going to evaluate your book. You've got to evaluate your book. So Jennifer was saying that there's definitely some hole punches out there that'll punch a hole through the canvas pa- canvas pad, like a crocodile hole punch. I don't know what that is. But okay. Sounds like, you know. There's some it- sharper, better. I got a $10 hole punch. Yeah. Is just doing paper. <laughs> 10 sheets. That's but if you've it. got an awesome hole punch, maybe it'll work. Awesome. See, being creative is about making what you have work. Really seriously, if you have anxiety about color mixing, I just want you to take a deep breath. Let it go and realize this isn't complicated. This is simple stuff. Mm -hmm. If you had, say, all deco, I'm going to come back over here to the pad, John. Okay. If you had all deco paints, this would help you paint along with me or any artist with what you have in. Now, a lot of those lines, those those are real light right now, so we can't see. Yeah, because I penciled them in because I don't like to discover things like at the last minute that I suck at. (laughs) Gotcha. So I do some pre work to make sure things go pretty well. So what I generally do is I take my T-squared, I measured off because I'm only using one, two, three, four, five, six today, six colors, because I want to show you how to add a color, a visiting color. Ooh, okay, that's cool. To your, um, if you bought a new tube of paint and you wanted to know how it was going to work. Mm-hmm. So I'm making little dots, one inch along each side. And then, in theory, I would be doing that same similar thing here. Could you push that forward just a little bit away from you? Yeah, well. I don't know how easy that is for you to yeah, work. I think so. All right. All right. You just tell me what I need to do because I want him to see it. That's perfect right there. If you can work right there, that's And awesome. I'm not time-lapsing it, guys, because, right, I want you to see what I'm doing. Yes. Now, these two squares on this far edge actually are going to be for uh, my black and my white, and that's where my hole punch will punch through. Oh, okay. Okay. So I always try to leave those for that, and then it makes it a nice, because you got to leave yourself a side to hole punch. You're going to have nice hole punches right through your work. Not that it matters, because, again, this is your book. Your reference material. This is reference material. I have seen people make some stunning, and I meant to give an example, and I just didn't get one pulled together, some stunning color wheels and color boards that were like coloring books they were fantastic fanciful imaginative um i'm going to show one at some point during the course i'm going to pull one together because when you understand how fun it can be Mm -hmm. it's it just makes a difference when we go into interference colors or these colors that impact paint in a really crazy way these charts are how we're going to get through that and it's not going to be a big deal gotcha right This is how we're going to get through that. And most artists have, if they're doing their work, sometimes we get, is everything okay? Okay. If they're, if they're doing their stuff, most artists have a few of these color books around. What kind of, hmm? Go ahead. Oh, you were asking a question. No, yeah, no, go ahead. ahead. Well, most of them have some type of color book around and they are um, constantly adding to it. And I just use a T-square because, guys, I'm just terrible at um, straight lines. 
Gotcha. So that, again, you're not turning this in. Don't take this too seriously. You can make, look, Larry got a little off corner That's here. Right. You can make the decorative one later. Right? Yeah. Right now, what we're practicing is the theory of this. What makes this functional? I should probably go the opposite way. Here's a tip. That's okay. Mark away from yourself with your T-square because <laughs> your ink will drag. Now, that's a micron pen you're using? I am just using a graphite one Pigma pen with watercolor archival ink. Okay. So it's waterproof. It's not going to pull into my paint. Okay. Now, could, would a Sharpie work? I believe a Sharpie would work. <laughs> it's probably Sharpies any... are incredibly useful pens, man. Those Sharpie people made a useful pen, didn't they? They, they did. They made a really... I'm like, what does a Sharpie not really do? Bet you a Sharpie writes in space. I was just thinking about that. It, it's not pressurized, so I don't know that it would. Might not. Were you actually just thinking about the space worthiness of the pen? I was space worthiness of I was like, I wonder what Dom would say about the space worthiness of the pen. Is it probably it would stay marked in space? We have a friend who's a trained astronaut and doctor, so we have all these like interesting space thoughts that we have now. <laughs> Most of them are, are, you know, most of the conversations with Dom are more about, you know, other space-related stuff there. But yeah. You afford push that forward there? Which, oh, well, I've got a, I'm just getting it. So, see, I've got this little grid in here. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to, just trying to share with you. And, and you know, if you, if you need a triangle, you can use that, too. It's just they're useful tools, and you'll be using them in your book. Again, getting straight lines. So, I want to do our basic palette. Right, and I'm going to get tubes out because I don't spell great. And I'm going to say my first paint here is cadmium red medium. And I'm going to write that out. I don't have to write it neatly, as clearly I'm not. And then I'm going to come over, if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six squares. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure I am <laughs> two, four, five, six. All I'm going to do over here is CAD red. Mm. Just the initials. And I can put the M here or I can put an M here. I abbreviate it. This will make big deal in our, chemi like our chemistry books later. Yeah. Now, I wanted to do some quinacridone magenta because I think the quins do some crazy stuff in color. Okay. And so I'm going to try to write that. Doctor's writing is acceptable. And is necessary sometimes. <laughs> I just need to know what it is. All I need to know is what the heck I was talking about. Right? You just need to know, right, what you were talking about. Cad yellow medium. So you could go cad yellow medium. You just need to be able to go back. This first one that you're doing, guys, is yeah. what you have. It's what you paint with every time. So this first one that you're making, how many colors do you have in your almost every painting palette? When you are going to go paint, what are you pulling out? What are the eight? What are the colors that you pull out? If you think about Heart Party, we have Thalo Blue. We have Cad Yellow. We have Cad Red. We have Dogs and in Purple, right? Titanium mm -hmm. White, Mars Black, and Burnt Sienna. And sometimes we throw in a visiting color. Oh, okay. That's our palette, right? And we've been kind of adding some colors to our palette. We've kind of been adding some Australian sienna and some Southern Ocean Blue sometimes. And we've added some quinacridone magentas. And we've added some burnt umber. And we've added Prussian blue. Or you might add ultramarine blue. Lord knows every other painter on the planet really is ultramarine blue heavy. So if you're out on YouTube University and you're doing other stuff, you're going to need some ultramarine blue. So it's about making the decision. What is my core set? Because once you know your core set, you can then add colors to your core set. And all of a sudden, you are saving real money on paint. Yellow oxide in our, is in our core palette. Huh. Pretty much in everybody's core palette. Right, so that would be there. And then it's yellow oxide here. Interesting. You know, um, another one I could do is say phthalo blue. Why is that the one I don't have? <laughs> there it is, okay. Nope, today it's ultramarine blue. Fine, so I pulled over ultramarine blue. So we're going to do ultramarine blue. You can do phthalo blue here, but I grabbed ultra, so... 
So interesting. Uh, apparently they do use Sharpies in space. Oh my gosh, who knows that? Lisa. She was like, she went and checked. Oh, darn it. I did have Thalo Blue. All right, but we've gone Ultramarine Blue. I can't see today. So that would be UB, Ultramarine Blue. Right? Now I could um, do Burnt Sienna here, or I could do Thalo Blue, and I'm going to do Burnt Sienna because we need to see a brown. Now, if you wanted to do a study with the same color in different brands. Yeah. Would you, would you do that too? Yeah. This works for any time you want to test your paint. This is how we as artists, because um, frankly, man, it's not like the packaging is a good indication of what's going on, right? Right. It's not. It's not in any way a good indication of what is going on. And so we need to, on occasion, be able to test what they're telling us out. Yeah. And this is how we can do that. And again, I'm doing a short one because these can take hours. So this is just to show you how you would do it. And I definitely, you know, and then we're going to write in some visiting. Oh, I'm so silly. This is black. And this is white. Okay. So I'm doing that black, white. And you go. Which, can you write me a tube of black? So of course, I didn't bring that. So well, how I'm going to put out my palette when I'm going to paint this in is I try to get some organization. I will try to make this little circle and I'll do the reds and I do warm. Didn't I grab a tube of Quinn? Didn't I grab it? Wow, guys. Like today, it's the fuchsia. No, it's Quinn Acridone Magenta. That's magenta. I'm going to put out paint while John is looking. <laughs> Skip that one. <laughs> Cad Yellow Medium. I'm going to leave a little space for my Quinn because he's going to find it. It is over there in that pile, John. Because I was painting over there with it last night. We were just... Re I've really been thinking about this like a crazy person. And now it seems crazy. There it is. I did bring it over. Yeah. You can bring that tube of paint there to me. If I have all those over, they can be like, but what if we had nickel yellow ozide or something? Yeah, so if that's there, John is bringing this tray of endless paint over. I'm going to put my Quinn there. So you can kind of see this warm yellow. This Hold cool on, kind not, of yellow. not say that again, because I just, not, I was over here. They could push. So I, I'm how I have this warm red, this cool. I'm blocking my color sets together that are similar, and I'm doing them in the order that I wrote them on the palette. So it's like the warm red, the cool red, the warm yellow, the cool yellow. Gotcha. See what I'm doing? And then let's see, cadmium yellow. I, I'm super dyslexic, so... <laughs> and I don't mean that like the joking way. I mean that like in the medical way, like I wish they diagnosed me in school. It would have made my life a lot easier. We never do ultramarine blue, but it's interesting to see what it does. So the universe is guiding us to that. I don't know why today. All right. Here is the burnt sienna. Okay. Something to think about in color mixing. This mix is going to tell you the truth of your color. Right? Not what anything else. Not when somebody thinks about it. Not what some teacher told you about it. At home when you're mixing colors... The mix is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's your truth. Doesn't matter what's happening for anybody else. You're a fairly... I've got my nice number eight Simply Simmons. Your mix is your truth, and it will carry you through. And there is that I got from Texas Art Supply the other day. Right? Now, interestingly enough, we're going to get the pure pigments down this diagonal row. Right? And we're going to have duplicates. And what we're going to do, and I like this, Angela Anderson talks about this, we're going to have dominant colors depending on where the side the mix is. Right? So here, right, where we have cadmium uh, red with quinacridone magenta, I'm going to be stronger on, we're going to make this side the dominant. I'd be stronger on the cadmium, but here I'd be stronger on the quinacridone magenta. And it would just let me know a little bit about how those two mixes di differentiate. Right? So you're going to see them next to each other, but that way they're not the same thing. Make sense? Hopefully. I hope it does. As we paint it, hopefully it will make sense. So I'm going to get my brush wet just to prime it. 
And I'm going to spray my palette with wet palette spray because it's just so hot in here. This is just to keep my paint from drying out. I'm going to make sure I wipe this off, otherwise it'll clog like crazy. You don't have to buy this. You could just use a water mister. Also works, but I don't know where that is right now. <laughs> so my first mix is cadmium red and burnt sienna, and it's going to be stronger on the cadmium. So I'm going to take a little cad and a little burnt over here. Okay. Stronger on the cadmium mix. All right. Almost one to one, but a little stronger on the cad. That is burnt sienna. Check it. Because, again, so just... Like, <laughs> you have no idea. And I'm going to paint a little square in here. Just a little square. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just need to know what color it is. Just need to know what color it is. You can paint this as neatly as you want. I find it, and I've talked to other artists that do it, really incredibly relaxing. To build, make one of these? Yeah. Just super relaxing. Cadmium red and ultramarine blue. Okay. Stronger on the cad red, right? Because it's on the dominant side. Is that correct? Stronger on the... Yes! No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that funny? You are funny. So I've got my ultramarine blue in here, but it's stronger on the cad red. A little too strong on the cad red, but there you go. <laughs> I just tinted it. So I'm going to come here. And you can kind of see that nice. Now, this is the foundation for, like, uh, uh, mom's favorite gray. My mom, Ginger Cook, from Ginger Cook Live. You yep. know, this is the foundation of her favorite gray. Clearly, though, here you got red and blue, and it clearly does not make purple. Yeah. All right? It's not making purple. This is why you make a color chart. Now, can Because red and blue does not make purple. No. Can you run through the colors here one more time for everyone just to make sure we got them? I got the close-up camera so we can oh, see what okay. we're doing there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the colors here on the chart here? Yeah. Uh, okay. We, we can see down to burnt sienna. All right. So I've got cadmium red, quinacridone magenta today, cad yellow medium, yellow oxide, ultramarine blue because we had some brain fart where we couldn't find the phthalo, <laughs> burnt sienna, black, and then white. And we'll, we'll, we'll adjust for black and white a little later. Okay. I can just even... No, no, yeah. It's okay. I, I, hold I, it up. Yeah. It's black and white. It goes down to the edge. Then I've got, what I do is I flip it over here so it goes cad red, quinacridone magenta, cad yellow, yellow oxide, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And I don't worry about the black and white because I'm just going to tint the one, right? Okay. We don't need the double tint. And then here I have openings just in case I went to the art store later and bought some paint. You could fill your sheet up. Mm-hmm. And just do this on another sheet. I'm just trying to give you examples like how to make this economically useful to you. All right. So we'll go through this. And once you once you make it through it once, you'll probably understand all of this a little better. Yeah. And the more you make these, the more you get it. So this one's going to be dominant on the red. Yep. Right? Dominant on the red. Means <laughs> I mix it a little stronger with the red. I just need to know if I mix red and yellow, am I going to get something that looks like orange? Because sometimes you won't. Gotcha. Right? And that's just paint. Sometimes you won't. Now, I could get into the color theory of why, but as an artist, at the end of the day, you just need to know what makes orange. Yeah. There's a lot of rinsing in this. There's a lot of rinsing in this. So, the, and the key to these is... To oh, I just did that wrong. Because I'm dyslexic. <laughs> what did you do? You yellow oxided it? Did you did you mix cadmium red with yellow oxide? I did that. I was supposed to do that one here, and I did that. So okay, so here's a great thing to know. <laughs> when you mess it up, you're gonna let it dry. You're gonna paint it white. You're gonna go back and correct it. I have to do that all the time. That is my reality. Yeah. Doesn't stress me out. It doesn't freak me out. I'm gonna hit with a hairdryer real fast. To show you. Okay. Yeah. Everyone else was just like, wait, oh, we're confused. I thought that was. So you guys were right. <laughs> so. Yeah, just at, 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 as, uh, as you guys can all see, even... Uh, so it's dry now. And to get it back to pure, I'm going to just put some white here. Because yellow doesn't paint over anything but white. You just want to get it back to like a neutral color. So when you come back, you can see what the heck it is. Because again, this is just for you. I can make a neat, fast... You know, lovely little time lapse. 
you know, and I'm going to put that, which is the correct color right there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just good. You know, it's good for you to know. This is like, this is just one of my struggles sometimes when I'm charting things. This is a thing that I deal with. And I just don't let it, I just don't let it bug me that much. Yeah. Right? It's just like, okay, I know that. I know I'm going to have a couple squares. I'm going to be painting out and painting back. And I just breathe. I I'd say I'm... Usually when I do these, though, even though I have these moments where I'm painting them out and painting them back, I'm actually pretty relaxed. Yeah. All the time. About it. So, cadmium red medium and quinacridone magenta, we all probably pretty much agree that that's what I'm dealing with here. Now, just to, so we understand, cadmium red is our dominant color, right? Is our dominant color. So I'm going to mix a strong... Thank you, John. I'm going to mix a stronger amount of red. Uh-huh to this. Now I could use a palette knife and pull out beads of you know crazy exact measurements, but then um, that's just not me. But if it's you, let it be you. Okay, and you decided that cadmium red was going to be the dominant because that's the, the number on the left side. The on the one. left side. Okay, but you could, and, and it could be any one you put you there. You make so. up the rule that helps you keep track of this crazy chart. Don't gotcha. get into some like color charts have to be this or color charts have to be this other thing. Realize that you need a color chart as an artist. Okay, yeah. Right? So you know what your tools do. See how that's that's changed, you know? Yeah. That quite that up a little bit. And hopefully we'll be able to see how the pure cad red and I've got water, water. That's what you're gonna be going through a lot of is water on these. And you're using a number eight Simply Simmons? I'm using a number eight Simply Simmons because it's close to the size of my square. But if you remember the first one that I made, and you can imagine how I was just going crazy. I don't know how many times I redid this section over. Yeah. Um, these are half inch squares bisected by, you know, one inch squares. And, you know, what was I saying? Oh, I used a teeny tiny brush. I used a... <laughs> I used to brush this size to get that sucker in. And yeah. John was like, we're never going to get through the class tomorrow. I'm like, we're going to do this because people need this. Yeah. So I have some pure CAD. And I've got it right here next to the Quinn. And you can see that there's some difference if I tint the CAD with the Quinn. Yeah. And it's nice to see it. Also, it's good for you to know what your pure CAD looks like. Um, they're not going to like me telling you this, but you can, I believe, write golden and get one of these. So at the company golden, why, why we all put up with golden, even though they can be a total pain in the tuchus. See this, this is the actual swatches of the actual paint. Signed by the student assistant that came in to do this. Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous, John? Yeah, it is. And so, you know, then you know, this is what quinacridone violet is versus the medium magenta versus the quinacridone magenta. These are not the same. Mm-hmm. Really valuable. But if you don't have golden paint and you're never going to have golden paint, guess, couldn't you just make this yourself? Totally. And then but, you would have all of the information that you need. Yeah. But I'd say the one that Golden does is almost a work of art in itself. It really is. It's like on engineering awesomeness. So. So I'm really rinsing out my brush because I don't want, here's a trick here. You don't want any color to taint your mixes for you. Yeah. So now I'm going to take my quinacridone magenta. Oh, wait, I can, act. this is dry, so I can actually fix this now. I'm going to fix my CAD cadmium red medium and my yellow oxide this is a mix you would actually do with me this is a mix I would actually do all the time can they see that really well I think so and it's important to see how this mix is so different than cad yellow medium with cad red medium it's not the same color, and it's you'll get a sense right away why it's the basis for skin tone. Huh. You're going to just see things. And the thing is, is everyone makes these so fussy and so intense that nobody wants to do them. And they're such a useful tool. And again, I can't tell you how much money they save. And you're going to suddenly, 
You know, you could take semester after semester of color theory, and if you have the time and the money and the ability, I definitely suggest it. But if you don't, you're going to get an organic understanding, a natural understanding of your color. Yeah. So this is going to be my quinacridone magenta and my burnt sienna, stronger on the quinacridone than the sienna because the dominant color is on the left side. I don't know. What I, did I do some? Or I have funny crazy, crazy going on. Okay. So you can kind of see. And I'm always like checking. I'm like, am I crazy? So it's not like this color. It's not like this. Now, the next mix is going to blow your mind. And I'm going to switch to clean water so you can see it. And it's why I was like, oh, let's put the quinacridone in here. Ooh. Because it was such a cool mix. And actually, maybe it's a cool thing that I switched to the ultramarine blue. But again, that could be like, you know, um, Thalo right there does a cool thing too. But honestly, the the quinacridone and the ultramarine blue make us color I really dig. Is it as like some? It's just some crazy super purple. purple. It is. Look at that purple. It's like you space would never. Purple. First of all, this never mixes nicely with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It just makes. Look at that spacey purple. Look at that spacey, groovy purple. I know this is like kind of, I hope it's okay I'm doing this with you guys in real time instead of uh, <coughs> time lapse. A little sippy sippy there. <coughs> Let me mute you there for a second so you can cough. <laughs> Give her just a moment you get a little better? Mm-hmm. All right. Rinse, 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 rinse. There is no bad mix. You have to put your mic down. Just a touch. Okay. There's no bad mix. Okay. One of the things I want you guys to think about when you're mixing paint yep. is I give Ultramarine a lot of grief, but actually when you really play with it, there isn't a bad mix. Yeah. So a little, little stronger on the dominant color here, and I'm trying to keep the yellow away from the purple because it will throw my mix. And I'm going to paint this in here. Isn't that gorge? That is. I love it. And everybody oh, loves the real it. time of this. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> What'd you such, do? Huh? What'd you do? I, I dipped in the cad yellow. Oh. Dope. I mean the cad red and it would have thrown off my mix. So I'm just trying to make sure that I have a nice little swatch. And again, you can paint these beautifully neatly in. I'm trying to get you guys to the idea of this. And so you can see it happening for me in real time. And they, they like the real time. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And there's and there's a lot of people who are going full screen, which is why chat they they, they keep jumping into chat going, Oh, I'm still here, but I'm going full screen. So <laughs> All right. <laughs> I did that again. You did. What'd you do? You put <laughs> yellow oxide How did how did Quinn get where yellow oxide goes? I don't know. It's it's yellow oxide and Quinn and I don't and know, I did it again. I don't you you got to So you're when you're at home and you're feeling like, Man, I can't mix paint. So, so there's two mistakes for the Sherpa today. We'll see how many we make through here today. This will be like one of those things where I'm going to wish I had like, you know. Oh, the thumbs down that are coming. Uh, no, this is just, uh, this is when I wish I would have installed like the, uh, the sports package on our broadcaster so that I could keep score. <laughs> oh no, it's so bad. <laughs> We'd be at two today. It's so bad. I have such a thing with it. Well, I know what it looks like now, and we know we love it, so we're going to take some, <laughs> we know, that's nice. Some yellow oxide? Yes. Wait, was that yellow oxide? You no, I have, to, I have to let the white dry a little oh, bit. Oh, that's right. I'll come back, and I'll take this where I've got it, and put it where it had yellow medium, where it actually goes, and then come back. and. So there's always a row for me that's this. By the way, if you're coming on the journey and you're doing pastels or you're doing, I don't know, gelatos or you're doing oils or you're doing watercolors, it doesn't really matter what medium you're is. The theory for this, especially if you can keep your rows straight, <laughs> mm -hmm. never fails you. Now, there's a really interesting question here. It came in. so Which is, why can't you track your rows? <laughs> <laughs> so, now, does everyone need to go home and take all their paints out and do all of the paints on all the combinations. What I would suggest is pace yourself. 
right? Yeah. Um, and so the reason I do the, the we're going to say this is my core. Let's say this is what I paint with predominantly, right? And you guys all know the core heart party palette. Yeah. Right? But I take my core, you know, and, and you might need to divide these into half inches if you have more core paints than me. But you just want your core paints. Once you know your core paints, you can make a sheet with your core paints on the side and the paints you like to add in again up on the top. Because you already know what your base mixes are, so you're just trying to learn how the new paint works with your... It's like having a blended family. You're just figuring out how you guys all work together. Gotcha. But the, the most important thing is to complete the first one, just so you see yeah. how it works. You want the first one so you have your baseline. So fewer colors and accomplishing in the first one yeah. would be more important. Would be way more important, and then adding into it. Yeah. Because, and remember, every time you buy new paint... You can put your cores right here, you know, mm -hmm. your new visiting paints up here, pop it in, pop it in your book. You can be adding to this book in two years and three years. If somebody comes out with some new medium that they tell you makes your paint like three colors, right? Ooh, yeah. You can do this. If you want to personally see if your golden opens will work with your heavy body Liquitex, don't ever tell them I said that. You could put your core palette of heavy body Liquitex here and your golden opens here and still do the chart. And you're going to figure out, do they work? But you'd have to leave it outside in the exposed air for 30,000 years to see if it's truly <laughs> the standard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for painting, you know, just a... Here paint. is <laughs> quinacridone magenta and quinacridone magenta. Dominant quinacridone magenta. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to see a couple things about this paint, too, is you're going to see it's a little translucent when you're painting. Yep. And that's the reason why the canvas texture on the paper is nice, the canvas finish is nice, because then you can kind of see how it is on canvas. What's, what's opaque? What's translucent? What shows through? What's, you know? All right. Quinacridone magenta and cad red. Dominant quin. Because we had a dominant cad there, but we're going to do dominant quin here. So... Trying to keep out the other colors that might get in there and have an opinion. All right. Right here. Dominic Quinn. And you can see it's a slightly different. Oh, yeah. Translucence. It's a slightly different value. It just lets you know what the heck is going on with your paints. So you, the nice thing about these charts is then you start to realize, oh, my gosh, it's not me. That blue is just never going to make that green, no matter what I add to that blue. Yep. Or you're going to have a color. People are like, how'd you get that color? Because you're like, oh, well, nobody knows this, but ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta makes this crazy purple. I add a little white to it, and it's bananas. Yeah. Let's see if I get through the yellow oxide. <laughs> 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 now that I am at CAD Yellow Medium. So, cad, cad Yellow Medium and Burnt Sienna make what? Uh, I don't know. What does it make? Dominant Cad Yellow. All right. Pretty good approximation of yellow oxide. Huh. So, when, you know, you're at, uh, when you're somewhere and you don't have your yellow oxide, but you have your yellow and your reddish brown you can get a very close approximation of it nice and that's why i'm like this will save you money you know what it does then you're not buying stuff you don't need you know what to do if you have an emergency if you went to somewhere to paint and I, john knows i've done this mm -hmm. and you forget some important tube of paint like yellow oxide like you do this is ultramarine blue and cad yellow medium i will overcome my charting issues okay <laughs> dominant yellow which is really hard but there it is and is not ever going to be a bright green ever 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 it's a nice green but it's not a bright green is it mm -mm. So on some of these translucent colors, if you wanted to add a study to see how it covered over a darker, you could you could put a splotch of, of black in there and then 
You could put a little heart with your Sharpie. Huh. And then you, just do that. Yeah. Yeah. Golden puts three little lines across their tube of paint. You can test your opacity. You can test your glazes. Hmm. You can do little tests. You can little test everything. <laughs> there is a period in the art journey where I think everybody little tests everything. I, if I wish I hadn't had a fire, I would be showing you the part of my journey that was like, little test the world. What happens if I add these dirts to paint? <laughs> <laughs> Not every little test is a good idea. <laughs> but then you don't know it till you do it. Nope. All right, so CAD... Yellow medium and yellow oxide. Woo! She knows what she's doing right now. See if you can get to that pure yellow. Yeah, I'm just trying to. This is that is the challenge of this. Is getting that. And sometimes that's why I switch to maybe a slightly smaller brush. If it's getting to be too much, but I'm not going to because I'm in the purposes of trying to teach this real time, but you know, be off the air before this evening. Well, every, everybody's loving the real time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even even Lindsay is in here. She says she loves doing color charts, too. Oh, so. she I, she's one of my good examples. Have you ever seen Lindsay have a paint or anything that does not have a color? I'm like, it's just the thing. I'm now like, does she have a color chart? She always does. <laughs> she does. It's fun. And I bet she's in there telling you how relaxing and informative it is. And she's probably also laughing at the fact that I cannot track this yellow oxide <laughs> for nothing. So this is this one's easy. This is just my CAD yellow medium. So hopefully I can um, get in here. Let's see if I can pull out some clean paint. I think it is. No. Yeah, it is. Okay. So you can see how it's different than the tint. Than the dominant... Uh, uh, cad yellow with a little bit of yellow oxide. Yeah, it's just a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Cad yellow medium. I'm going to probably have to, and this is just because this is how it is on this, which is why I, I want to show you my fussy palette. And I'm putting out way more than when I did like the other one. Mm -hmm. But this is helpful. So just if you want to know what psychoticness you're going to have. Wow. <laughs> it gets here at some point. That is where it gets, and you'll be there. Now this is going to be a really pretty, pretty color with cad yellow. Dominant cad yellow. All right. Isn't that a pretty, pretty color? That is a beautiful color. For spring, that's a color I would absolutely want in my um, color palette. And you can kind of see how sometimes with these, I could get so excited about a new color and be like, oh, we got to go buy that. We must go buy that. Gotcha. Right? Because that's doing these lovely, lovely things. And this is why I never really worry about a new tube of paint because... If I do this, I'm going to find something to do with that color. Get the CAD dominant. The, I mean, the yellow, CAD yellow medium dominant. All right, with CAD red. And you can kind of see... It is different than what the quinacridone magenta makes. So there, you know, you've got yellow and reds, but clearly not the same orange. Right? Mm -hmm. Garden. Sunset. Nice. And into the yellow oxide. Who's cackling now? <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> just because I've just struggled with the yellow oxide. Oh, yeah. Well... Right. This also really helps you um, n start your like little bits of paint mixes here and there. Mm -hmm. It really does. And look, this is not the same as the cad yellow and the burnt sienna. 
Yeah. Similar, but different. And, and you might not know that until you see them next to each other. And if you had them way across the chart, you might not know that. So how do you know if a color is warm or cool? Well, the honest truth of it is there's this whole, like, color thing of it. Generally, when I'm looking at it, I look to see if the color has been mixed to the warm side of the color palette. So in, like, had red, I can see it has yellow in it more than blue. Mm -hmm. So then I know that is a color mixed to the warm. Interestingly enough, phthalo blue and ultramarine, and I've done it, and everybody does it, mixes those up. Phthalo is actually to the cool. Ultramarine is actually the warm. And sometimes you'll mix it up. Hmm. I, that's cool. Yeah, wow. there, but you then you're deep, deep into art geekery. Then you've gone art geek, which is awesome, right? Yellow oxide and ultramarine blue. There's a good chance they wrote it on the tube, though. Huh. Um, medium or I mean, like uh, warm or cool. Some tubes will. So yeah. I would say there's a moderate chance. Uh, I would say the the pro pro brands are going to. Um, have more of that information mm -hmm. than the mid-grade or student brands will. And um, there's a lot of blogs out there. There's a lot of information. You don't have to know everything. Somebody knows it. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to even stress yourself out about that at all because somebody somewhere knows it, has battled that dragon for you, yellow oxide, Yellow. Oh. Yellow oxide, yellow oxide? Well. That seems right. Ick. That's where your pure is. Yes, okay. See, that is like literally, I have a thing. I also have the thing. I don't know if anyone else has that where if I look at a word, sometimes I cannot see if it's spelled right or wrong. Like I can't see it. You know, and when you're in school, they don't know that that's actually, you know, how your brain is wiring information up and down the pipe. Mm -hmm. They just treat you like you lost your mind. <laughs> and it's like actually a thing. And so it was really wonderful to learn that that was just a thing that happens sometimes when my brain has like a, it has a little moment. <laughs> it has a little moment where it's like, I don't know where that data is. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. So here's the mix of the cad yellow medium stronger to the cad yellow and the yellow oxide. So now I'm going to do yellow oxide with a little bit of cad yellow. Let's just see if there's a big difference between those. Not big. I mean, it's there, but it's not big. Now, can you, uh, are, what's the difference between a hue and a tint? Do you know? Yes, and it's just m eluding me at this moment. I'm a little frustrated. Oh. So I have this thing in my head to remember hue, value, tint, tone. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come to me. It'll come to you in a minute. It'll now, come to me in a minute. I think I'm so deep. I'm so trying to I keep totally track get that. of this I chart. So, yeah, you right. guys have lost the other functions of my brain. Now I'm like deep into chart. So that's okay. Like, no, no, we're charting. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll ask a simpler question here in a minute then. I mean, good luck with that because I'm really deep into charting. <laughs> Are you, uh, do you think you'll be doing an episode on cool and warm colors? Yes. Okay. We're going to be doing episodes on um, harmonies, triotics, um, complex, complex color mixes, and how to use uh, design seeds to create design stories. Because <laughs> I think, why not? They've already worked it out for you. Yeah, so we're going to be covering that. So basically what you must know as an artist is cool colors recede into the background, warm colors pull forward. Right. So it, that's a big issue when you're trying to paint landscapes and you're trying to say... This set of flowers is significantly closer to me than that set that's far away. Well, you better cool down and gray out the far away flowers and brighten up and warm up the up close flowers. That would be true grass. A bunch of grass. Field of grass. Some of that grass is far away. Some of that grass is up close. Up close grass um, is going to be warmer and brighter. Far away glass is going to be grass is going to be cooler and grayer. So like, you know, those abstract uh, landscape artists, that's how they pull off that effect. Huh. I'm sorry. Soapbox. <laughs> so 
Soapbox! Didn't mean to. But that's all it is. Get some of this. Mixing it up. Get some water on it. And coming over here. Woo! We're almost through this thing. Wow, we're cooking right through there. We are. I mean, but we're not being, like, particularly fussy. So, you know, we're showing the principle of it. And I think it's good for you to see me go, I don't know where I am in the row. Yeah. Because it happens to me. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Pretty color. Pretty color. Stronger on the ultramarine blue. If I were painting a cold set of mountains, I'd want to know this mix. Everybody's everybody's really loving the extended uh, explanation while you're doing the color chart. So Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. This is an experiment. Well, it's an experiment. The whole class is an experiment. I think this whole, this whole, this whole YouTube thing is an experiment. <laughs> it's an experiment. You know. All right, but you can see how different the mix of ultramarine blue is. Ultramarine blue on its pure scale just is vibrant. And now when you see this, you can totally see that it's a warm color. It's crazy. Yellow oxide! I didn't lose it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't lose it. I'm so proud of me. It's so hard for me to do. You didn't lose the color. Oh, you have no idea how hard it is for me to do. <laughs> it, again, but it doesn't stress me out. Just because something's hard, it doesn't stress me out. It doesn't have to be easy to be enjoyable. It yeah. just has to be achievable. I think that's something we're constantly sold to. Is things need to be... Cad yellow medium. It, things need to be enjoyable. To be, uh, you know, something we should spend our time doing. And they don't, I mean, they need to be enjoyable. They just don't need to be easy, is what I'm trying to say. Wow, my, okay, so you may have noticed that when I am working on color charts, my brain goes, and this is because you're deep into right brain territory. You just are. <laughs> deep, deep, deep into right brain territory. And when you're deep, deep, deep into right brain territory, well, uh, communication definitely drops down. So we've got this nice green here. Green, <laughs> green, 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 green. Rio was like, is now a good time to ask Cinnamon what the definition of art is? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mm, probably not. <laughs> well, yeah, that one I can actually answer on the fly. Oh, yeah. You're just going to. Henri Duchamp, the creator. Well, I actually think Mom, Beatrice Woods is maybe more the creator of the Dottis movement, but we'll say arguably Henri Duchamp is. Said art. Is whatever the people making art decide it is. Well, that's what that's what Henri had to say for sure. Yeah, he did. And but there's some genius to that, right? Yeah. You know, I'm making it. I'm the one who's telling you if it's art or not. You know, the viewers coming in and deciding. But, you know. These are the things in communications presented in a visual media to express and experience through the eyes of the artist. You know, mm -hmm. so I kind of like Henri Duchamp's definition. Oh, so good. I added a little quinacridone to that thalo, and I got this lovely color. Right? Yeah. But look at this color. See how these are not? Yeah. Quinacridone heavy, ultramarine heavy. Gotcha. Ah! So now on the dominant, you don't have to necessarily have a dominant color on your mixing chart. No, you? no, this is just a good idea so you can kind of get a sense of your ranges. Ah. That's all it is. This just helps you with your ranges. If you're like, oh, I'm just not going to do that today, guess what? I'm not coming to your house and grading your chart. You just have to be able to, you could be like, I'm not grading, I'm a freehand this sucker in. Tic tac toe, paint, a, paint and go. Yeah. And be fine. And I'm never looking in your book. You're looking in your book. And so you just need to know. You're leaving breadcrumbs for yourself as an artist. You're leaving footprints. 
Mm -hmm. Right? This can get as fussy and crazy as you want it to. Or be as relaxed and mellow as you need it to be. So I'm here with a little bit of cad red. Maybe a little stronger on that blue. So, and that's just the thing. If you if you take an uh, you know a color theory class, you're you're going to be fussier than this mm -hmm. because there's there's you know the stuff that they're trying to cover, and they're going to want you to do it a particular way. But for the purposes of being an artist, the best thing about just being an artist in your studio, yeah, is you can have it your way. So whatever your way is is a good way. All right, woohoo, Bird Sienna! Hey. Right, super, super, super fun and easy. So Sue's like, when do I have to stop? When do you have to stop like, mixing color? Yeah, she's like, do I, do I have to mix all of them? Do we just go through, or shall I, you know? When do she? When like, does she stop? She could just, you know, she could just mix colors forever. Well, Maricha, the junk and data girl, um, does not seem to have a breaking point. Lindsay does not seem to have a breaking point. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't think there's a point you have to stop. My recommendation is, is still base palette. What's your base palette? What are your colors that you're consistently going to every painting? Get those charted and then start adding the fancier, funner, experimental colors, you know, into supplemental charts. No. Right? Because we could also chart these all in a grayscale. Yeah. We could all, all charge these in a in in a tent where we're adding white and white and white and white. Now you still do this. There we go, white. <laughs> so we had <laughs> white or black or tinting. Uh. <laughs> I knew it was in there. I knew it was. So, yeah. but I, you I still, still do this. You still do this practice, right? I do. I you know I have I have a again because I think I went through my charts. I've kind of not been as drilled down. Because mm -hmm. I've had so many of these, but then I do I do these like did, things where, where all the time. Yeah, and you did the one for the black light paint. Yeah. So yeah, so that black light painting picture, which was at the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's how I knew what the heck that stuff does. Because that stuff doesn't mix like it's supposed. It doesn't make the colors you think it's going to make. It does not make the colors you think it's going to make by any stretch of the imagination. So I've tinted my brown with my ultramarine blue. And that is not far off a of burnt umber. Oh no, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get some yellow. I probably need to switch to my other clean water. You need more, more clean water? I brought three out because I expected it to be kind of a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. Water intensive day. Yeah, water intensive day. See, and I've got red, yellow, blue. And notice how I have a full range of colors. Whenever mm -hmm. you have a palette where you have a red, a yellow, or a blue, you have a complete range of colors. And, there, and there's a theory that you must always have these. But of course, being an artist means you do it your own way. There's five artists that broke that rule yesterday, successfully. Yeah. So there is no rule in art that you cannot break. So anyone who's like, it has to be this way in art all the time, always, has not been paying attention to what other artists around the world are doing at all. Because hmm. nothing has to be that way all the time, always. Oh, I almost did it. Oh. Just oh. a close-up camera there in a minute. Huh? Let me go pull that close-up camera down. Yeah. All right, but we're getting the sense of what this color chart tells us, aren't we? Yeah. What does a chart tell us? It tells us what the mix is. There is no wrong mix. None of these ultramarine blue mixes are wrong. Yeah. And you could probably see places in a landscape you would use them. None of these CAD mixes are wrong. None of these quinacridone these quinacri mixes, I think, are all very, very interesting. But they're not wrong. Or the CAD yellows, the yellow oxides. or And what this does is if you have just tubes of craft paint, and even if it's got color shift, even if it doesn't mix colors like you expect, if you have one of these charts, it doesn't matter what craft paint you have, you're going to know what your craft paint does. 
Now, there's a there's there seems to be a lot of questions around the same thing here on like kind of where to start with this and would would you say that the first whatever painting they're going to do next maybe grab those paints and do a color mixing board for that? Yeah. And then that way they have a a, a place to say. Listen, if you right now have cad red yellow a cad cadmium yellow medium yellow oxide Thalo blue, dog zinnium purple, and burnt sienna. Am I missing any? Titanium white and Mars black. You've got a full palette for most of the heart party paintings. Yeah, most of those, yeah. And yeah. That we, that's in the description. Yeah, or, I actually did the full thing of what we've been messing with and then marked some of them as optional. Yeah. You know, like ultramarine blue is optional, right? Though, if you know about ultramarine blue, when you leave my videos and go to anybody else's videos... You're going to get, you know, a good time with that. Mm -hmm. So I think you're, the, the, are you mixing in the wrong one? Uh, Quinacridone, Magenta, and Burnt Sienna. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. It's a QM, Burnt Sienna. Okay. No, see, it gets to you now, doesn't it? Everyone else in the channel is like, wait, stop her. She's doing it wrong. I was like, wait, is she? You could. That's see, that's how it happens. Burnt sienna, cad red. Was the last one you did okay? Was it that was quinacridone magenta? Burnt sienna, right there. There's the cad red right here. So okay. the one good thing for me is like I have this dyslexia kind of craziness on the chart, but I can apparently see like an extraordinary range of shades and tones. <laughs> so you know, one I guess one ability. You can see the colors, just not read the words. <laughs> yeah, that um, yeah, that just sums that right up. All right, so we have this here. Now, in in terms of this project, when you say dominant, you're mixing more of the dominant color, more of the brown. Like since this is dominant, I'm trying to mix more of the brown than uh, just a little bit, just a hair more brown than red, right? And then a hair more red than brown. So that way you can kind of see the difference between yeah. the two rather than having... Look how translucent this is, but how much more opaque with just a little cad red it is. Yeah. So here's something. So you bought economical paint. And your burnt sienna is way too translucent. What could you do to strengthen it but not completely change its nature? Well, clearly you can add a little cad red to it. Gotcha. Right? How useful is that to know? Yeah. So now I'm going to go through and just do a little black into all my colors. And then I'm going to do a little white into all my colors. And then you're going to be like, wait, now you can make 50 shades of gray. <laughs> and it won't be a crazy, silly, pointless movie that wastes your life. It will actually be 50 useful shades of gray. So I'll say to you guys all the time, I don't have burnt umber. <laughs> what can I do to make it? Now you know. Now you know what you could do to make a burnt umber, or a real close approximation to it, is if you added a little black to your burnt sienna. If you needed a darkish, blackish blue, look what you got here. That, that's why it's just good to know this because sometimes you're missing a tube, but you don't want to stop painting. You don't want to quit being creative today. You want to keep having some fun. How do you do that? Color chart. And you can already see this palette's getting fussy. Yeah. Send. You know, Lanier, should I need to send all these to Maymay and have her craft something out of it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm mixing black into these colors. Now, if you added white to it, you would get all these different crazy shades in gray. Wow. Black and... Oh, but I did do it there, didn't I? Mm. Ah! <laughs> I was feeling so, so clever and amazing, and then I went and did it. So I got to go back and fix it. 
But I might as well, I have that color out, so I might as well just paint it in. This is life. This is art. You deal with the challenges that you have. You ready? I'm gonna try that. All right. Real quick. Deal with the challenges that you have. We all have challenges. You gotta figure your way around it. Whatever's facing you between you and the painting, whether it's, you know, tools or materials or paint or physical or mental, you know, just be like, okay, that's cool. That's fine. I'm like, it's cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a row that I can't handle. <laughs> it's okay. And I know it and I just accept it. <laughs> Quinn and a little black. I'm going to need to put out more Quinn. That's annoying. <laughs> and we're going to have a link up on our website here in a bit for everyone. Oh, okay. So we'll be getting to that in a bit. But uh, everyone's asking about the, the link uh, <gasps> for registering on the website, and all that's going up right now. We're uh, just making sure that everything is... Uh, uh, doing okay out there on 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 the web front we look there's a, a reason why we don't have a wonderful youtube channel about wordpress <laughs> there's a reason so we uh it's a little, little, little it's, it's a there. challenge for us i got no problem blogging all the time i'm gonna add lots of written information to this <laughs> that's not my that's not my difficulty but if you're joining us uh later on the link is uh, in the description and uh, you can go right out to the website and find the quest link on the main page uh, Did Marichi come by? Oh, it's we're we're, we're uh, she's she's still uh, making sure that we're all good, double checking all everything. She on was going to come by and check in when she was at a good place. Yeah, but we'll have the link up on our website for sure, so you'll be able to go to the website and register there, and we'll have that open up today. All right, cad yeah. red, getting through here. What's that sort of like? Oh my gosh, is that a little bit? You could literally make, take black, this carbon black, and cat red and get very close to burnt sienna. Mm hmm. Things that's so cool when you know it, you're like, wait, what? What? I didn't need to buy all that. What? You know, you do. You should buy those colors. There's, there's a truth about pure pigment and how it mixes and stuff like that. But again, if you're just like following along with somebody or you're at some place and you just need to be able to work it out. This is this is the key. So burnt sienna and white. Can we see that on the chart here thing? It's a little low. You may have to pull the close up camera down just right. a touch. Pull it down just a touch. There you go. I like to add the black tint and the white tint. Whoop. Drop your pen. I'd your like to brush. drop my brush on the floor. That's all right. I like to do it like to do it a lot. Ultramarine blue. So this is where ultramarine blue and phthalo blue live in a totally different universe. And you see it really well when you add white. So can uh, once you've got that mixed, can you show us on your brush the, the dominant versus, uh, you know, where you have a dominant amount versus a non-dominant amount there's? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, uh, we're going to learn that even more so. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Because when I show you how to do formulas. Because that's oh, about yeah. creating a dominant side. It's about two to one, three to one, four to one. Super fun stuff. Gotcha. My funny voice. <laughs> Not an indicator of the fun that might be coming. No. If you know, if if they have different blacks here as well. <sighs> Oops. I just really, you know what? It just. I'm going to write OX next time. <laughs> Here's my two tip. I'm going to write YOX, and then I'm going to know. Then I'm going to be like, hey, I got it. Don't be worried about it. I got it. I got it. But, uh, you know, do you know what the difference between ivory black and Mars black is? Finish. Tone. Interesting. So when uh, we're going to do... Um, don't want to like blow it off, but we're going to be doing the blacks and the whites. 
Okay, so we'll go and through those And just talk two. about like what they are. I'm going to brush up on my Michael Harding stuff and uh, come in with some really fun facts about all the different stuff because there's really like there's a lot of blacks and there's a lot of whites. Everything in art is about the artist having control over their result. Mm. So whenever you see like titanium white has a lot of you know pigment in it and is very bright. But you know what? It's not fluorescent. Uh. Right? You would think it is, but it is not. So I got the quinacridone magenta with white here. What's going to be really interesting is when I take some white over to my CAD. Yeah. I'm not going to get a bright pink by any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to get kind of this uh, different color pink. Huh. Interesting. So if you're trying to get a bright pink, because you're like, well, red and white make pink. And you're like, that pink just isn't working. What am I doing wrong? Nothing. So I have this wonderful chart that I now have about all these colors. You could paint yours in neatly. You can paint yours in ornately. There's one of my favorites ever is like each little mix is a chicken. <laughs> the chicken. <laughs> I just thought if I had time, I'd make little chickens. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay's like, wait, chickens? <laughs> yes, chickens. Cute little adorable chickens. There's been a lot of chickens. Easier to do in watercolor because you can make two wet edges and like mix them together. But you can do it with the acrylic too. So wait, say I went to the store and I bought some paint. Like you do. Like say... Uh, like you do. Like you do. <laughs> say I went to the store and I thought, you know, I'm going to get this Southern Ocean Blue. What is this all about? And I have this spot open. And you might not. You, you may have to make a whole new there. chart. Right? You might have to make a whole new chart. But I have some spots open here. And let's say this is my regular palette. This is what I always paint with. And I just want to know, how does Southern Ocean Blue fit into my life? So I take my Southern Ocean Blue... Right, because this is a lot of paint companies have one color. If you take a course with Drema Toll Parish, she has a very specific palette. If you try to show up to her workshop without those colors, guess what? You don't get to go. Yeah. So you might end up having to buy this paint. And you're like, what do I do with this color? Because it'll be like this one paint company. Lots of artists do this one paint company. Period. Right. Now on these, I'm not going to do a dominant. I'm just going to do a one to one. So I'm going to be like. What does Cad Red and Southern Ocean Blue make? Yeah. And that's all I want to know. I just want to know what color does that make? Apparently that makes some crazy kind of green. <laughs> so Joanne was asking at what point uh, should one be able to call oneself an artist? When you're ready to take the looks. <laughs> <laughs> When you buy a brush? When, when you buy a brush. Whenever you're ready to call yourself an artist, you get to call yourself an artist. If you create with purpose, whether that's to relax or to enjoy yourself, whether you create to communicate an experience or share how you feel about the world, for whatever reason, if you're regularly going and creating and you're creating for the sake of creating, you are kind of an artist. You know? Yeah. There are more people in... United States than the population of Australia writing artists on their tax returns. Weird fact. Huh. So, and none of them are, you know, really particularly like doing it as their living. That's like less than 2%. Quinacridone magenta and Southern Ocean Blue. Look at that crazy gorgeous color. Would you have ever thought that in a million years? Wow, no. So... So now you're like, oh my gosh, look at this color quinacridone and Southern Ocean Blue makes. That's fabulous. That's that's all these birds I've been trying to paint. And that's these uh, cornflowers I've been trying to nail. Because this and this would be like great for cornflowers. That's what it's about. Huh. Cad yellow medium. 
And I'm going through this with you so you can see. Now, I had a little trouble getting a bright green in my ultramarines. But if I just bought Southern Ocean Blue and added it to my palette, what do I now have? I don't know. A bright, bright green. Look bright how bright green. that green is. Wow, it is bright green. It's a right? Almost an emerald green. It's almost an emerald green. Well, and this is an unexpected green with the yellow oxide and still pretty bright, but different than the canned yellow. And look, I didn't make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> it's so amazing. Right. So now you're like, this has been a really interesting addition to my palette that I would not have expected. And you're seeing it real time. I just, I'm doing ultramarine blue and Southern Ocean blue. Wow, what an unexpected, it definitely changes. That's, this is not that. Oh my gosh, I can go paint the ocean here. This is, this is a wonderful ocean color. Who would have thought? Yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, well now, this chick said buy Southern Ocean Blue. Maybe she's not as crazy as she initially seemed. Because I got to get it online. It's a pain to get here. Why would anybody bother? Because sometimes there are paints, so there's chemists in paint companies, and they do have degrees in color theory and chemistry, and they on occasion will make colors that change everything. Color is not equal and all paint is not created equal. If you ever go to a Michael Harding lecture, you're going to get a real clear, immediate understanding of all this paint is not created equal. <laughs> not even close. His cad red looks so much better than my cad red, it's shocking. It's like my eyes saw new colors they had never seen before. Camera can't see it. You only see it live. I, I have no other way to explain it than be like, you can only see it live. Oh, yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to, like, watch a video and have any idea that it was as different as it is. Mm -hmm. it, it's so weird how the light, the light reflects off. Right there, I go, and I bought this new color, and now I'm feeling like I probably didn't waste my time. Wow! So while I was glancing away, Lou was saying that we've had 260 people out here. Oh, well, 258 to be specific. 258 people like, wow. who are ready to go buy paint. Right, and then if I just want to, and then I'm like, wait, look at that. Look at that spectacular color with the white. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. I just know more about my paint. It's not about getting a grade. It's not about impressing anybody. It's just knowing what my stuff will do so that I'm not sitting there stressed going, I think the number one thing is people go like, I mixed and mixed and mixed and I couldn't get that green. And I just wish I could be in the room because I'm like, there's a good chance that the green wasn't happening because those paints don't make that green. Yeah. Right? And if you know that ahead about what your, what your tools are, then you're not making yourself crazy, right, about what's going on. Now, so I had this very interesting time, and I know I'm going to punch my holes here to add it, and I could keep adding paint, keep adding paint, keep adding paint. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about this right here. Okay. The uh, recipe sheet. Okay. Oh, yeah. Those the are recipe cool. sheet is a big, big, big deal. I, I don't know if I can get it up close where you can really see it. So you see me, quinacridone magenta and Southern Ocean Blue. One QM plus one SOB. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is a little darker and a little bluer. One QM plus two SOB. This, then down here, you, you'll see on this side, one QM plus three SOB. Two QM plus one SOB. See how we're doing that? And then here I got one QM plus one titanium white. So I'm seeing the pure colors here, mm -hmm. and I'm dealing with recipes here. Now, let's say I was doing something for someone and they really wanted this and I managed to mix this color and I painted the background. This is Ginger Cook Live's tip. 
Mm -hmm. If you write down your background recipes, if something goes wrong, like you painted a leaf in a wrong spot, it can be hard to remember what the heck you did way at the beginning of the painting. If you wrote it down, you can erase, save you hours Mm -hmm. trying to get back. So let's talk about how we might do that. I'm going to be a little bit crazy wasteful here because just visually I need a minute. That's okay. And I'm going to save this because now I really am thinking I'm going to start sending these to just people that (laughs) 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 might not know. So let's talk about... um, there's been some there's been some questions for colors. What has okay? Like like uh, bamboo. Yes. What color would you use for bamboo? I would look at bamboo and then I would tell you. Because <laughs> <laughs> bamboo is probably like lots fifteen of, colors. Yeah, there's lots, lots of different shades of brown. Right. Yeah, and some of it's going to run to a, a hotter, higher green, and some of it's going to be dried out and run to, you know, a cooler range. And I. He, This is actually going to be part of your mission. I guess I'll tell you some missioning here. Oh, yeah. So one of your mini quests this week, mini quests, is to go out into the world and look for colors that surprise you in the everyday world. It would be great if you could get shots of those colors with your camera and hashtag it with Big Art Quest. Mm Mm-hmm. And share it like on our social media and all kinds of places. And I think Marisha is going to have something that you can do with that on the webpage. Yes. Right? So that's one of your things. And think to yourself, how would I mix that? And if you can even take a guess at that, that's good. You don't have to get it right. The point is you're, you need to ask your brain to do things. And if you don't ask it to do it, it's not going to try. It's not going to try to forge those neural connectors. It's not even going to try to guess what something might be. But if you're just sitting there at the post office looking at, like, some extraordinarily orange pants on somebody, (laughs) you know, think about, like, how would I make that crazy Sherbert? Like, would that be, is that CAD? Well, I just mixed that CAD. Would I have to use Quinn to get that? How would I get that color? And the shadow there, it's not quite the same thing. How would I tone down how I tint down the shadow? Yeah. Right? Really important stuff. The other thing I want you to do is on your color chart, like say, let's say you really went to town and you have a palette that looks like this and you have a color chart that looks like this. I want you to ask yourself, this is, this is something and I'd love you to write it like on the back here in pencil. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite color? Oh yeah. That that was cool. What's Mm -hmm. your favorite color? What's your favorite color? And then if you can think, why do you think that's your favorite color? Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it a memory? Is it an emotional memory of an experience you had to a color? Is it that it calms you? Does it impact you emotionally? Does it remind you of something? Does it feel like something? Does it, how does it impact you? Why, does that, why is that color your favorite and how does it impact you? And then, um, yeah, I'd love to see that too. Love to see that. What's your favorite color? Why? Because you know what? Kids don't ask each other what they do for a living. They're not like, hey, what's your best subject? (laughs) Right. When they're playing in the playground, they're like, what's your favorite color? Because that's more important information about a person. Ask a person what's your favorite color, what's your favorite animal. You're going to know a lot more about them than if you ask them what they do for a living. A lot Mm. of people are accountants. But if somebody's like, my favorite color is aqua and I love unicorns, you know a lot about them right there. It's true. That's my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get back into this just real quick and back into my T-square. And only because, and I'm going to show you two examples. I'm just going to give myself some lines because I'm a hot mess. Because? Just because I'm a hot mess, right? So I'm just going to give myself some straight lines. Otherwise, I will literally be the most unlevel thing on the planet. <laughs> you know? And I'm going to give myself a little space to um, punch hole. And then I'll put this up here. And, and I'll show you the examples of two, like, where I didn't give myself lines. I get a little crazy. So what colors could I play with? I could play with phthalo, which we have all the time. No, next week when they come when they come back with that from their art, the, their mini quests, you'll talk about what your favorite color and animal is, right? Um, they can know right now. They can know right now. I, I think we should make them wait until next week. Okay. I think that's fair. 
because right. they have to bring back their homework wait till next week you can yeah. totally do that i think that's that's fair all <laughs> right they have to wait until next week not that they don't have another any other reason to tune in oh, i have to clean all my caps cap cleaning it's just liquitex makes a self-cleaning cap bravo liquitex because the expectation that I'm going to just keep cleaning this cap all the time is just a crazy expectation. You know what would be really great is huh. if, if everyone would go and post pictures of their animal in their favorite color on the Facebook page. <laughs> Hashtag big art quest. People like, there's bears, there's animals, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> there was a really great pair uh, thing online today. But anyways, so okay. I've got phthalo blue because we didn't get to mess with the phthalo blue at all. Sorry, I'm distracting you. It's okay. So I'm going to put a little a little dot of my phthalo blue here. Okay. You have to adjust your close-up camera. I will. Because I'm going to make a recipe. camera. I want to know what's, what is going on with my phthalo blue and my cad red. Right? Okay. Probably need cleaner water, but we're going to... Do you want me to get some clean water? Uh, I think it might it that, be that dirty blue, enough to mess with yeah, our blue, thing. Blue, that blue tends to go weird. Well, it's the it's the white I'm going to be on there with that's going to really, really go bananas. So now I'm going to write P-H-T-H-A-L-O, you know, blue, which I know is going to be P-B. And then I'm going to write CAD red medium. Okay, I'm going to say this plus this. This is the story I'm going to talk about on this page all right so switching out i have so many cups of water <laughs> so many don't spill anything now if i were to say take and here we're going to do this i'm going to show you this say this is one this is one 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 plus one that, what I'm saying is about the same amount. Equal parts. Equal parts. This is not... So, you can get crazy scientific with a, with a palette knife if you feel like it. You and I'm it, going it to up. paint this color right here. I'm never ever, after I do this, going to be confused that this and this are making purple. Nope. So what I write is, but I love this color. This is a useful color. Believe it or not, this is useful in oceans. This is useful in forests. This is useful in skies. I would use this in animals. I would use this color so many places. So I'm going to say this is a great color. And to get it, I need one phthalo blue plus one cad red medium. Mm-hmm. Right? I've got that mix right there. What if I grab one? One. Ooh. I'm just playing right now. So that's pretty cool. So this is two P Princess Bubblegum <laughs> plus one cad red medium do i think i could get back to that maybe yeah i do now what if i were to take one white and go here look at this well now you're kind of into some skies you're into some really cool colors right here yeah Right? How many paints am I not buying today? Because I know how to do this. So then I'm like, oh, two princess um, bubble gums plus one cad red medium plus one titanium white, TW. Okay? I have been in school with a PhD in art. That means somebody stayed in for eight years and, and, and went into art history and all kinds of craziness. Yep. And in their personal art practice, they could not mix a color again, so they kept mixes in baby food jars. I'm not going to say a person's name. Just saying. Actually, uh, m multiple people like that. I have color actually met many, tough. many people like that. Yeah. There's one I'm specific, specifically I'm thinking of. Oh, yeah. But I'm just saying... 
and this is somebody who's really dedicated their their life to art and is is tremendously talented and all that. But this would solve the baby food in jar problem. Yeah. Besides being a whole hootacular amount of fun, right? Yeah. So don't feel alone if you're if you're afraid of mixing colors. It's it's a daunting yeah. thing. It's a daunting thing. You really don't need to feel bad. So I've got one, and I'm going to get one red. Right, one blue, one red. I'm back to that first color we had, and then I'm going to come back and get one more red. Now I'm two red, two red. What color? It's a different color, guys. Look at this. Two red, right there. Not this color. Slightly different. So then I go one P B plus two C R M. But what if I added one more red? Oh, ho, 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 ho. this is a very important color I'm seeing right here. I use this all the time. This is why I never feel the need to use. Like, I hardly ever feel like I have to use black. One princess bubblegum plus three cad red mediums. And what if, crazy person that I am, right? I added a little white to that. What color is that? I added white to this. That's what is really that? sharp. You pull it, pull the close-up camera down on that a little bit more. Yeah, isn't that amazing? You know, everyone else mixes yeah. white and black to get gray. I get, I can make a painting with grays that's so colorful and so rich and so vibrant, and it's a tonal study. Because I don't use black and white to make my gray. No. Because I know that one. Phthalo blue plus three cad red medium plus one titanium white is off the chain. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Mm hmm But you can keep playing. You can you can get really complex things. So I have one Princess Bubblegum plus three or CRM plus one teen teen white. But if I went back with one red into that mix right now. I'd get this color. And then I can sit there and say, oh gosh, I love that color. I've been looking for that color all week. And that color is one princess bubblegum plus four cad red medium plus one titanium white. Crazy. But if I add a titanium white to that, just saying, I've just got three colors of paint out right now. But how many colors do I have? How many colors do I have? I'm not even getting that tricky yet. <laughs> One princess bubblegum plus four cad red medium plus two titanium white. Two two color three colors out. And this is this is going on. Alright. I could be like, well, what happens if I just take this thalo blue, though? I just need to know what happens with one thalo blue, one white. What's my pure color here? Look at that. Ooh. One thalo blue plus one titanium white. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
rinse out my brush because there's at least down a little. there's at least a tight there's at least a um, see that color mm -hmm. isn't that amazing so many colors do a whole painting now I could do a three color painting challenge I don't have to just do it with Copic markers I get another white one white out and I mix it into this. There's your tint. One phthalo blue plus two titanium white. Pulling out, just to remind you guys where one looks like. Let's see if we get the one. Do we see cool. one? Yep. This also tells you like the tinting strength of this paint. How much white do I have to add to lighten it significantly? One phthalo blue plus two titanium white. Learning a lot today. Looking really cool. Now, I could do even smaller. I'm just doing this all big so we can see it. Mm -hmm. You can be bananas on here. And you don't have to be neat. And you don't have to be orderly. I'm just doing this because, you know, it's all official and on YouTube. My, <laughs> my free painting glass is all official and on YouTube. Okay, so CAD Red Medium. One CAD Red. One Titanium White. Which we haven't actually done here yet. So, is this down? I'm going to make sure this is down. Okay, it's down enough. Look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. You can literally have gone through your entire book with this. Mm hmm This is one CAD red plus one titanium white. There are artists that will guard these books <laughs> the way... Um, Cooks will guard recipes. Right? So I've got, oh, that's almost two. <laughs> but I'm going to come mix it because I got it back to one. So what's this? Look at that. Ooh. Lovely, light, soft color. One, uh, one CR plus two titanium white. Let's add one more. Now we just have a true tint, off white. We'll talk. Remember, I'm always talking about tone your white, tint your white. Mm -hmm. Here it is: three titanium white to one cad red. How lovely is that pink? And then obviously you could go the other way. You could do. You could start. You know. You could go. Two cads, three cads, with just, just a little bit of white. Right? These are just directions that you can take it. Can you guys see all the colors? Look at the vibrancy of that. This is why oh, a lot yeah. of times people are just like, no phthalo blue. Because the vibrancy is so intense. Right? So when I have this sheet now, suddenly I have this thing with cad red and titanium white. And then I had burnt umber. Look at these mm -hmm. look at these formulas I was creating. So there's skin tones in there. There's it's the formulas for great stonework in there. There's the formulas for wonderful sunsets in there. So when I'm messing around on my palette going a little bit of cat and a little bit of this and da 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 da, da you're looking at foundationally lots of this somewhere along the way. Right, mm. and you can make this really. You can be as challenging about like stuff as you want. You can, there's a science to color, and you can you can see when I don't have lines, I get a little cray cray. But does it matter that I got cray cray? It goes in my book. If nobody sees it, it's like, am I showing my book? Is my book privately for me? What kind of book do you want? What do you want the book to be? Is it you just want to do some green studies? You're pretty good on everything, but it's greens. Go like play with the green and keep it a playground keep it easy keep it simple and mellow 
This is just color mixing. This is getting your crayons back. Don't you want your crayons back? <laughs> Everybody wants their crayons back. I want my crayons back. Yeah. Right? This is just reclaiming. These are your adult crayons. This, if you, if you have watercolors, guess what? You can do this all day. Mm -hmm. Little chickens. Right? I have these little swatches. You can do beautiful kind of secret garden stuff. I'll demo it later. You can make these gorgeous illuminated things where you do these color mixes in them. If you're just like, man, I need to have that in my life. If you're like, no, I just need to know. Scribble, 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 scribble. That's me. Yep. <laughs> scribble, scribble. You can do that. Just don't not mix color. Yeah. That's all I'm saying because I, I when I see someone, they've got like, these two plops of color and they're trying to pull them together and then they keep adding and pouring more white on it and they're having this sort of like ocean of paint. Has anyone had the ocean of paint? Mm, yeah. It's like you're like, I've got this weird putty color and now I, I don't even know where I'm going to put. I don't want any of this putty. Not only do I not want the putty that I have, I don't want any of this putty and I have so much putty, it's all putty. And, and because you don't understand the tints and strengths and tones. Sorry, I had a thing with that earlier. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know. I don't know where yellow oxide is today. <laughs> you know, let's go back and look at, look at what we did. Like we can get, look how we can get all crazy, crazy in our thing. Today together, in this amount of time, we made this. Just, I mean, wow, this, yeah. they're, they're beautiful. They're easy. You can make them as, you can make them neat and tidy. You can pack a lot of colors in them right you can build a base palette and add visitors to come over and and go what is this color worth buying so much stuff there so much stuff i hope that this somehow and i've got in the i card some other people doing the same stuff i've got my mom has she does a color book that's oh my god it's like an eight hour class color book Basically, that's what you're doing, right? You're mixing your formulas. You're writing them down. What's mom's gray? That is cad red, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and titanium white. Mm -hmm. That is literally, you've now summed up all the stones ever in my mom's paintings. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like ever. <laughs> right? It's just that mix. And, and, and then you, first you think that's crazy, and then you look at a sheet like this, and you're like, there's a lot of color in those three paints. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of color in your paint. And, yeah, I have pro paint, but this is true. If you've got a bunch of those little bottles, mm -hmm. you're going to find this is true for them, too. And then when you, when you see these things and you see how they darken and you see stuff, then stuff isn't going to come up and surprise you. I'm not saying don't upgrade when you can. I'm just saying know what you have and how it works, and you'll find your frustration in your art journey is dropping a lot and you don't have to have you know a degree in art to have an art book you can have your own color formulas you can have your own secret color formulas that you refuse to show other artists <laughs> or you could probably an art community would be like the artist that's like hey this is how i got that crazy green it was insane i just discovered it one day because i bought this new tube of paint and i didn't know if i wanted this tube of paint but then it worked with this other tube of paint and it made this green i've never seen before and it was so exciting and look at all the shades it makes Mm. It's going to happen to you. And the thing, the reason I have the book with the punches is that as you go, that's why I'm like, that big, giant, thick thing ain't that thick. Because mm -hmm. you're starting to see right now, oh my goodness, I don't have enough sheets of paper yeah. in here. Right? Yep. So, you, you know, and if you're switching, like, I got to do this on Bristol, that's cool. That'll be okay. That'll be okay. Um, it tends to soak in the paint and it messes with things a little bit. That's the only reason so, why I do it anew. But you know what? It's not important. It's only important. You know what's going on. So do they need to gesso the, the paper? Yeah, you can gesso your paper. You can put a um, gel medium and varnish down and then gesso your paper and it creates a barrier for the paper absorbing. Mm -hmm. uh, isolation coat and then the gesso creates a texture. Gotcha. So it will mimic whatever's might be. You just want to mimic what's happening on your canvas. You gotcha. can grab, um, I, w I would get a heavyweight paper. I wouldn't get under Bristol or, or multimedia paper. I would definitely try to stick in a heavy, heavy, like, your printer paper is going to be a problem. I mean, you can prep anything. So just make it work. Because, again, it's that balance of your budget and having a good time with your art supplies. Mm -hmm. Got to balance those two things. Got to make it work. Now, we're... Uh 
you know, we're, 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 we are doing a soft launch on our, on our, on our website today. Are we? Yeah. Oh, that's not awesome news. <laughs> no, no, it is. No, it's great. <laughs> We're we're gonna because we have we have a, we have a relatively small community and we've got we've got the registration pages and all that stuff up and running. Oh, are they? Yeah. So so the link is in the descriptions below, and uh, <laughs> you know, but you have to bear with us. A lot of the a lot of the graphics and format will be changing over the next few days, and uh, you know we're gonna tr we're trying to bring a lot of functionality in here and. Uh, make a lot of cool stuff for you guys you know and this is a great feedback time because yes. you guys are the inaugural questers yes you are the first to come to the magical land of art quest so you know if you're like oh i really need to know this this is a great time to suggest it because we'll have what we think you need to know and then there's stuff that we will discover that you guys really want to know so tell us that definitely feedback there if things aren't working, feedback. If you you need if it's unintuitive and you're not liking the user interface of it, feedback. Yeah. Because it's yours. Yeah, we're you know and and uh, you know we're we're uh, you know everything is being built on WordPress right now. That's uh, you know it's it's what we're we have as our infrastructure. So you'll you'll go on there and register as a and get your WordPress registration, and then it'll allow you to log into the site, and you can start building your profile and do all sorts of cool stuff inside there. And uh, yeah, and so then I guess that way we can um, also contact you if like there's a new feature that's open mm -hmm. or a new quest is open, but nothing like crazy. Yep, and this is uh, this is just the beginning of it. So you know, we look forward to it. We're just launching this, getting excited about it. We literally have our app more together than our website. I've we been really thinking do. about this whole <laughs> week. I'm like, I have an app, and my website is a hot mess. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's we, cart uh, before horse. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get the infrastructure in place. <laughs> <laughs> Just back end's really cool. Front end not so good. <laughs> yeah, back end is amazing. Front end's like, oh, ah! <laughs> <sighs> but again, I mean, in my defense, I don't have a YouTube show on and none of this. No, <laughs> except nope. art. So hopefully today was useful. Um, next week, we may we're gonna try to get the quest in. We may do it on a different day because mm -hmm. on Thursday, Angela and I are meeting up and doing the CAC hashtag event. Yep. So just look for quest three. I'm gonna number them. Big art quest. Yes. Hashtag and then number three. Anytime you want to let us know anything about the big art quest, just definitely do the hashtag big art quest because we're the only one doing it. So I'll find it as much as I can find anything. And you know, post those colors that you're seeing. Post your theories on how you'd mix them. Post your favorite color and your favorite animal, right? Because we should definitely be good to go over a heart party and be like, I'm a blue dolphin. And then everyone's going to be like, oh, I totally get her more. Or I totally understand mm -hmm. him in a way I never did before. It's just trust me. Let's just forget about like what do you do for a living. <laughs> just start with favorite color, favorite animal. Much more important about mm -hmm. who I am than what my paycheck is. And and you know if you guys uh, if you don't see the the link on the main page to register yet, don't panic. You, I, I've put it here in the in the uh, in the link below, but it will be for all of you who are tuning in a little later. Mm -hmm. uh, but those who are with us right now, if you don't see that link up there, don't panic because uh, it's just here in channel for you. It'll be up on the main page in the next uh, 24, 48 hours for everyone else. As will yesterday's viewer mail. Yeah, yeah, was, you know the viewer mail. We had a uh, we had some stream problems, so I'm going to re-upload that. And uh, yeah. But quest away. Quest away. We're we're looking forward to it. Come, come on quest your way with us. to your better best art self. Twenty. You well, I guess it's any year. <laughs> yep. Whatever, Whatever year it is. Whatever year you're watching. You guys have a beautiful, beautiful time. I'm gonna see you at the easel really soon. Love you guys. Bye bye.